I've been out in the sun all day though. Am I? And now we're live. So what's going on, Dino? Full sushi. Yeah, we just came from sushi. So we're here with Dino Cook today. A little bit late as always because technical issues, but we're here up and running right now. And uh, what a pleasure having you here, man. And thank you for having me, for sure. It's amazing to have been you here. Been a long time coming. Yeah, I think last time I saw you was a couple of years ago at a convention. I don't remember which one it was. West Palm, I believe. West Palm yeah. Beach, right? It was like about two years, right? Yep. So finally, as promised, that we're going to be asking Dino a bunch of questions. So um, bring him on. And uh, Dino, I would like to, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, making it all the way over here. And I want to start by actually knowing how you got into tattooing. What made you start tattooing? I've been an artist my whole life uh, since I was a child. <clears throat> my father was an artist and photographer. And so I always knew that I would do something in the art field, just didn't know exactly what that would be. And uh, a friend of mine had a friend with a tattoo shop and he saw my portfolio of drawings and uh, the fact that I was drawing all the time whenever he would come around me and he kept telling me, you need to meet my friend. Uh, he would definitely love to put you to work. And at the time I thought, uh, for whatever reason, I felt like oh, tattooing must be beneath me. I thought I was meant for something else, something grander in my mind. But little did I know that it would be my calling after all, you know. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll do it for a little while. It'll be a stepping stone. And once I started doing it, I just I, I can't find myself doing anything else, you know. Uh, no, I dabble in other art forms, but nothing brings me as much pleasure as tattooing. And I can relate to that. And let me ask you a question. So when you started tattooing, uh, I'm sure you started doing like realistic uh, tattooing. You started probably doing other things. Well, how, how did you uh, get started with the, the actual tattooing? I mean, were you doing like flash work like yeah. most of us out there back then? Absolutely. Absolutely. And even when I would try to do other styles of tattooing uh, and not on a realistic flair, uh, it would always kind of just emerge itself even when I tried not to. I couldn't help it. It just seems to be who I am as a person. Is uh, I, just, I don't make a purposeful push towards realism. I think it just oozes out of me no matter what style I try to do. I can't help but be a realist. So everything, everything you do, you, you, you always try to find a way of making it as close as reality as possible. And well, it, it, well, yeah, and it's like even when I'm trying not to, even if I purposely try to do something that has more of a new school or a traditional look to it, it'll just always somehow seem to find its way back yeah. to, to, to realism. It's just, it, I, I found it to be just who I am as an artist and rather than trying to make something fit or force a fit that wasn't natural, I just embraced it and just started doing what I feel myself gravitate towards. And uh, were you an artist before uh, starting tattooing or tattooing is something that drove you into art? Uh, no, I was an artist my whole life, basically, you know, according to my mother, to hear her tell it, I was drawing on everything from yeah. the time I was in diapers, you know, anything that would stay still long enough, it would get drawn on. So, it, and I never went to daycare as a child. My dad had a studio, and so he would always take me to his studio. And ironically, looking back on it, it's kind of crazy how it worked out. He would give me coloring books, and I wasn't allowed to color in my coloring books. He would give me tracing paper and make me trace the pages so that as I would advance coloring, I could still color in the same coloring book over and over. And so looking back on it, it's like so closely related that it's crazy. And Kenneth Morris says like, sounds like me, it's not on purpose, it just happens, same for me, bro. That's awesome. Yep. So we have people from Argentina join us. Uh, Welcome. Yeah, if uh, by any uh, by any chance you uh, you don't see the video, uh, make sure to refresh because we have to restart the, the live uh, broadcast. So everything seems to be fine. Sound is good and everything, right? So today, um, let me interrupt you for a little bit. I want to show you guys something that we have here. For those that uh, watch the live broadcast until the end of the show, we're going to be giving away this custom print. This is actually an original uh, photography from Dino Cook, underwater photography. And this is to announce something that we're going to be showing uh, to you guys in just a moment. So I just wanted to let you know, guys, hang on. Some of you is going to be able to walk out with one of these. Uh, Dino himself is going to ship it directly to you guys. It's going to be a, a print on canvas. Um, so uh, 
check it out. You're gonna be able to own one of Dino's original photography. So hang on for that. Um, now, we talked a little bit about how you start into tattooing. Um, obviously, when you started tattooing, you started with coil machines, right? Yes. How was how was your approach? I mean, how was the first time that you grabbed a coil machine? Uh, was it easy for you to tattoo with it? You know, honestly, I, it really was. Like I, I picked it up and it just I just instantly took to it. The first tattoo I did, uh, the shop manager at the shop that I worked at, the owner had had to leave to run some errands, and the manager kind of broke protocol and let me do a piece. And when the owner came back. And show and the manager showed it to him. He he was in disbelief. He thought that the manager actually did it, and that he was. Oh, really? To, he was trying to pull a fast one on him, saying, "No, you did that. You did that." And so the next day, he had me do one in front of him. And at the time, I was still uh, working a side job. And he told me, uh, "Quit your side job. Come here full time." That was back in 1993, and I've been doing it full time ever wow. since. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. March of 93, March 16th, I believe it was. And uh, was color always uh, something that you were uh, into from the beginning or totally. black and, yeah? So. Yeah, totally. Like, I, I like doing black and gray. Uh, I, I enjoy it a lot, but I just, there again, I just gravitate towards color. I just feel like that's who I am naturally. That's awesome. So uh, we got Chris Barnes. I love sharks. <laughs> All right, so if you want to win a, a piece of uh, shark right here, you know, uh, wait until the end of the live broadcast. We're going to be giving one of these away, guys. So it's pretty good. When did you take this picture, by the way? Uh, actually, that picture was taken, I want to say, act, that's actually a pretty old one. I took that in 2007, so that's a 10-year-old photograph. Where was it at, uh, location? A place called Tiger Beach, Bahamas. Wow world-renowned for tiger shark population. That's awesome. Now, this uh, led me to the, uh, the third or fourth question, I forgot. Um, so, I know you, you know, for your underwater uh, tattooing. When did you start focusing on, you know, uh, on, on that type of uh, underwater tattooing? Well, diving and the ocean have been a love of mine for as long as art. Literally, I've been getting in the ocean and playing with fish and uh, crabbing and fishing and snorkeling since I was in diapers. And so, when I started tattooing, I, I got known at first for color realism, pretty much with pinup girls. For a lot of years, I was known as a color pinup girl artist. And slowly, sea life pieces started seeping into my body of work and I, uh, I began to notice a big demand for it and I, uh, some, at some point, I don't know when it was, probably late 90s, early 2000s, a light bulb went off and I thought, why don't I marry the two together because it's my two passions. And so at that point, I made a purposeful push. Uh, one of my good friends and fellow artists at my shop uh, earlier this week, Rob Thomas was asking me, uh, how do you build a niche in tattooing? How, how do you go about that? And I don't know that I purposely looked at it in that manner, but looking back on it, uh, he, he said, what do you do, just refuse to do other things? And I was like, well, no, not if you have bills to pay and you're being realistic. You know, you've got to support your family. You've got you to do what comes your way. But what I did is I just made a purposeful push to pull the things out of my portfolio that I didn't want to so much be known for. And so if, if I were only showing and, and portraying the things to people that were viewing my work, that it was what I wanted to do, it helped drive the machine in that direction. And so before long, I kind of became known for it, and I really dug in a whole lot deeper in, in the last decade even with it. And I'm sure like the people that uh, you surrounded yourself with, you know, other divers and people in the diving industry, they were like, okay, you do tattoos, I wouldn't mind having, you know, a fish of me because right. it's something that they may relate to. So They're just as passionate about it as we are about tattooing. Exactly. Yeah. And so I've, I've really made a push in, in that world, that industry. I like getting my work on serious, what I call watermen, you know, and people who are industry leaders in the, in the diving world, shark diving world. I work on a lot of marine biologists and scientists and filmmakers nowadays and uh, heads of aquariums and I've been really blessed and really lucky in, in the whole push for that. And uh, it, it just has kind of compounded and snowballed and uh, I, I guess where I have to 
use is blessed, you know, like I say, it's just been, I, I hate to use the word luck because I, I believe luck is preparation and opportunity. Something that we work for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So let's read some of the que uh, questions and comments of people. Uh, Brandy Sexton say, how can I get one of those shirts? Uh, they're available at fkirons.com. Uh, and today we're going to give away also a shirt, might as well, and a hat. So along with a print, I just decided to add a hat and a shirt. That's it. So anyone... Oh, so hang on, you may be able to win it. You, you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have to buy it. So let's see what else. Um, so we have uh, Robert Webb. This guy hasn't missed, I think, a single live broadcast. So how you doing, I always Robert? Always see him on here. <laughs> yeah, he's always there. Um, <laughs> I bought a Halo two last week. I won the FK air freshener for my car. Oh yeah, we actually worked <laughs> on some of those uh, FK iron logos that you can oh, hang yeah? in your car. Yeah, nice. with um, what's that smell? That we like lemongrass. lemongrass lemongrass air freshener uh, for cars those are coming up too uh we got people from uh copenhagen well wow, people from all over the world we wow. have 86 people watching right now that's good that's got a lot of people on the other part of the world are probably sleeping or uh they're already working so let's see right here we got people from argentina so thank you everyone for joining us today uh dino one of the things that i wanted to ask you is um I remember, and we were talking about this, I remember about Psychotat's uh, studio, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that website. When did you first open the shop? Uh, we opened our current location, Cinco de Mayo, 1995. I'm still working in the same building, same office, over 22 years later. Wow. Yeah. How many artists are there in the shop right now? Six. So you have six, six uh, booths, yeah. six uh, six stations. That's awesome. And they're like family, for real. Like the guys at my shop have been there pushing two decades, some of wow. them. Wow. You know, uh, not all of them, but we have zero turnover. We joke that somebody basically has to die to get a spot <laughs> open in our shop. That's awesome. And you guys are up, up, up booked like solid or you guys have slots for people that want to a blend of both i mean we, we still take walk-ins and we have guys that are booked up solid you know and some of the guys like to keep it both ways you know they like taking in fresh stuff and mm -hmm. some like being booked up constantly you know ahead of time and do you like to uh to be booked up ahead of the time like uh like block six months or are you just i do i generally these days I work so much that, it, that I don't stay booked up that far in advance anymore because I'm knocking it out all the time. I'm tattooing six days a week for over a year now. Damn. Yeah. And uh, so I, I kind of went through my phase of my career where I kicked back for a minute and coasted three, four days a week. But these days, you know, I'm just really feeling it. And uh, so when you work that much, I don't stay booked up as far as I used yeah. to. So I'm a little bit more readily available and I'm just knocking them out constantly. I remember back then seeing you uh, a lot more in the convention uh, convention scene. Are you planning to uh, to start doing like more shows? Or uh, I am definitely. I've been working on some really large scale important projects at home with my studio and family and personal life. And uh, but towards the end of the year, beginning of next year, I'm definitely plan on getting out and hitting the circuit a lot more. I can see that uh, in you there, there there was kind of like a rebirth with your with your tattooing you know like we were saying before mm -hmm. uh, I remember early 2000s you know whoever didn't know your name was in a tattooer basically and right now I, I'm starting to see again more and more and more of your work and uh, you keep pushing the boundaries man so uh, commend you for that you thank know? you thank you I, I, I feel reinvigorated like you know maybe even more so than I did when I first got into this industry uh, and, you know, I make no big secret about it. I equate a lot of it to sobriety, you know. Uh, I just had enough of some of those ups and downs in this industry, and it, it can do it to you. Yeah, and I think it's something that a lot of artists may relate to. Yeah, for sure. Uh, including myself. Uh, yeah. You know, we had our times uh, uh, where uh, other things made us, uh, you know, take a... Uh, turns i feel like it just drained uh away from my creativity and my production yeah. level and uh you know my drive I mean, and now i feel solid and driven and you know eager to work loving yeah. it and the good thing is that now you're probably more focused than ever right absolutely I'm, I've, I've never been firing on all cylinders like i am now i've never been this clear and motivated my entire career so Anybody new to tattooing, that, that would be my first and foremost recommendation for anybody. And I don't mean to sound like a hypocrite because, you know, for years I, I was entangled in all that and all the 
ups and downs and pitfalls that it can entail with it. And, yeah. you know, this industry is loaded with it. But I think that uh, uh, something that I realized myself is that when I was younger, I didn't see the the dangers of doing certain things or mm -hmm. you know getting no, into nobody young does. You know, it, you, know you know what I'm saying. It's like and now you, uh, you you know like before I have a drink, I'm like, I mean, am I going to be able to deal with uh, with this tomorrow? You know, yeah. am I going to be hangover or something like that? So anyway, we're having a lot of people asking technical questions right now, and um, there was a question from Rob Thomas. Do you know what voltage do uh, do you run your machine at? Uh, well, that's a broad <laughs> one. <laughs> that's a broad one. That's the guy from my shop, Rob. He's doing Rob. that to mess with me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Rob, then? He's saying that uh, because I, I answered him one day and told him, he asked me, what bolt do you run your machine? I was like, that's like asking me what speed do I drive my car. Exactly. You know, it's it's depending gonna... the mood. Right. Hey, Rob. <laughs> What's going on, Rob? So uh, let's see, guys. Uh, w uh, whatever, whenever you guys want to start uh, shooting those technical questions, you know, we'll be glad to, to address those. Uh, do you know crack? Crack in Spanish means that you're uh, dope. Basically. Awesome, you know, <laughs> kind of like crack, you know, dope. Awesome, I'll so take you're that great. As a compliment. Uh, and also, I'm, I'll be translating whatever uh, question you guys may have in Spanish uh, to Dino and Italian. So feel free to bring them in. Sweet. Look at that. People are super still. Cartridges and rotary changed the game. So let's talk about a little bit about that. This is Aaron mm -hmm. Emerson. Uh, cartridges and rotaries changed the game. When did you start uh, paying attention to rotary tattoo machine? Because you, you were a solid uh, coil tattoo artist for yes. probably the majority of your career. Most of my career. Uh, I think it was about four years ago, I think it was, I got on board with you. And my first rotary machine was an FK Irons machine. And I picked it up and I'd heard different hype about rotaries and this and that. And, oh, they'll chew skin up and just, you know, I just kind of blew it all away and thought, I want to have an educated opinion on it. I want to form my own opinion based on my own experience. And I loved it instantly. And uh, did another tattoo with it and another tattoo with it. And I thought, you know, eventually I'll probably go back to coils. Never once have I done another tattoo with a coil machine. And I didn't do it on purpose. I just picked it up and fell in love with it so much that uh, I just never wanted to go back to using coils. Uh, and what was one of the things that uh, that you would say that you don't uh, you don't miss about tattoo coil machines? Consistency, you know. And to be brutally honest, I'm I'm some guys are very mechanically inclined and, and enjoy that, and I leave that to them. Yes. For me, yes. You know, I like I want to paint with the brush. I don't want to know how to make the paintbrush. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I don't mean that. I don't say that out of ignorance. I don't say it. Uh, some people look at that as uh, non-disciplined like i like oh you should know how to do this and that to hone your craft and and i'm like why there's guys like yourself that love it and you eat and drink and sleep it you know you're just going to naturally be better at that than me and uh i enjoy the actual artwork itself the application and so to that point i'm all about the performance of the tool exactly and the tool and the end result yes and the tool for me it it performed in a more consistent and reliable manner than anything I'd been used to in my career, you know? And it's just that, you know, no, hands down. And there's so many machine makers that I love and adore and consider close personal friends, and I mean no disrespect to any of them. I, I totally give them props and respect, but just something about it, I don't know, just, it, it, it it just seemed to lend itself to who I am as an artist. Exactly. Uh, uh, personally, I still like tattooing with coin machines. And again, I don't tattoo full time like you do right now. So when I get to tattoo, I get to enjoy, you know, all the mm -hmm. things that I enjoy about tattooing. So I still tattoo with coin machines whenever I get a chance. But I completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, some of the things that I do not miss about probably the old school is like how long it used to take me to sit up. You know, right. and we were talking before, you know, I would tattoo with six machines. Uh, in some cases, and it's six needles, six grips, mm -hmm. uh, six bags, six machines that have to be perfectly tuned for whatever I wanted to use it. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the setup uh, space also, you know, was larger. And now, I, you know, I feel that um, with some of the advances that have come to tattoo, not only, not only machine, but cartridges, you know, you need one machine, a bunch of cartridges, and you can be up and running in five minutes. So much more efficient. So five minutes. More. 
And no disrespect to, to the old school. I mean, it's just an opinion. And, and again, if I have to tattoo, I'm probably going to bust uh, Quill machines because, you know, we, we still make them and I still have to perfect those. Because there are a lot of people that like tattoo machines. Have you, tr uh, have you tried tattooing with Quill machines and cartridges ever? Did no. you ever make that transition or you went directly to rotaries? Directly to rotaries. And standard and needles. Yes. Standard needles with rotaries. I've only been on cartridges for about the last season. To be honest with you, I was a, a late bloomer in that whole movement. Uh, part of it was intimidation factor. We've had this yep. discussion before. That's yep. why I thought that the Halo 2, the crossover, was yep. such an ingenious machine, you know? I have it right here. And I feel like I represent a large body of the tattoo community in the fact that I'd been tattooing for so long, and you and I had this conversation before. I came to you and I was like, I was almost embarrassed that uh, I was like, hey man, I want to know more about these cartridges. Uh, I was reluctant because I've been tattooing for over two decades. And so it, it almost felt awkward to be trying to learn this new thing. And uh, it, it was just, it was hard and humbling to, to come up and say, hey, I don't know anything about this. Can you teach me? And so I suspect that there's other people like that. I mean, I can't be the only person that feels that way. Yeah, I think that there are, um, you know, I do a lot of conventions, like I was mentioning before, and we always talk to a lot of people and we talk, you know, talk to people from different ages. And there, there is a group of people, you know, the old school guy that wants to try new things and he's honest about it, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, I'm willing to, you know, try something different, I, I, but I don't know much about it. You know, can you tell me and stuff like that? And then... I've came across people that they refuse to say that they don't know something or they refuse to ask for help. And a lot of the time I hear, oh, no, I'm old school. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I don't touch that. And uh, in reality, as we were saying before, it's all about the outcome, you know. And I don't, I don't see anything wrong in, you know, learning or asking uh, something that's going to help me cut my say that time, you know, in, in half or probably four times less and right. perhaps improve uh, my tattoo. And again... Um, you know, I remember, for example, Bob Tyrell, you know, I talked to him many times and he tried to make the switch for rotaries for a while and he couldn't. And he always kept on getting back on coin machines. And I think mm -hmm. that right now he's solely on, on pen and, and cartridge machine, you know. Sometimes it's just a matter of, it's a matter of like cranking a couple of tattoos. Remember that first day that you started tattooing, you know, you right. weren't as good and as fast as you are right now. And be okay with getting outside of your comfort zone. Exactly. For a minute. And give, exactly. It, give it time to really feel it out and learn. And I thought what you said a couple of broadcasts ago, or actually you've said it on many broadcasts, get familiar with it the way it is first and then branch out. Like, you exactly. know, like use it the way it comes out of the box. Exactly. And if you want to change the stroke or change this or change that, you know, do so after you've tried to, try to conform to it first. You know, give it a chance. One of the things that um, that I also see is that a lot of the time people pick up a machine, and because they are in the middle of the transition, the machine doesn't do exactly what they would do with other tattoo machines that they're more comfortable with. They end up like selling the machine or dropping it. Right. And and you know, it's kind of like unfair for the machine, not, gi not giving the machine a fair try and. You know, right. You, uh, time. Case in point, a, a very good friend of mine that's a tattooer that I, I, I work on quite often, uh, he got a new uh, Halo 2. Some of the guys at his shop had got it for him. And he brought it to me. He didn't feel like it lined very well. He thought maybe that something was off with mm -hmm. the way it came out of the box. And I was like, well, let's try it out. And I tattooed him with it for the whole day. I was like, bro, this machine's working great. And so I think sometimes, you know, hearing that little bit of reaffirmation, it, then you may go back to it and second guess it yourself. And he since has started working with it, and now he totally loves it. You know? Totally loves it. And, it, and it just, it's what you said. you got to give it a little bit yep. more time, a little bit more of a chance, be a little bit more open-minded with it, and uh, it's e a, willing to learn. You of know? course. Of course, because uh, myself, one of the things that... Um, you know, threw me off at first when I started like trying rotaries was the the wave fact, you know, and the, mm -hmm. the wave factor and the balance of the machine. And a lot of us, we don't realize that uh, weight has a lot to do with tattooing. The weight of the gear has a lot to do with the way we line. And uh, I realized that, you know, I used to say, oh, my coil line better than my rotaries. And it was because of the weight of the machine. And a lot of people don't realize that now we, we have gone lighter and the, the weight is not there anymore mm -hmm. and the way is what sometimes assists uh you know with the lining to actually drive the needle 
and get a clean pass, for example. So uh, it, was, it wasn't until I figured that out that I'm like, okay, maybe I just gotta push more that I was able to line with rotaries. And this happened when I was designing the Spectra Halo 1, my very first machine. Like at the beginning, you know, I was saying like, oh, man, uh, I mean, you know, there's something about it. Until I did a bunch of tattoos, you know, at that time, I have my shops and uh, I feel really, really comfortable. To a point that there are a lot of people that are still asking for the Spectra Halo 1. And you started with the Spectra Halo 1, right? Yes, yes. That was the... There's guys in my shop now that still tattoo yeah. with it. Yeah. So... I still have a collection of them. So get familiar with the gear. That is the best advice. And a lot of people ask, uh, what is the best tattoo machine? And I think that depending your financial situation, if you're on a budget, uh, the best tattoo machine is the one that you have right now in your hands. Yeah, it's the one that's making you money. It's the one that you can afford. That's the that's the best tattoo machine. You know, spend the time to get the most out of it. And I'm sure that by the time you get the most out of that machine, you're going to be able to move on more advanced machines. Yes, well said. A lot of people are asking a lot of questions, and I don't want to sound like I'm ignoring the chat. So I'm going to go and try to uh, address some of the questions. A lot of people in Spanish. Vamos a hablar en español también. Un segundo, por favor. Uh, F4K Gaming is asking for your Facebook uh, to see your work. Do you have your work uh, public on your Facebook? Yes. Or what is it? Yeah. Uh, it's just Dino Cook. That's it. Just Google yeah. Dino Cook on Facebook. And it's Dino. It's at Dino Cook on Instagram. And, okay. And That'd probably be the easiest way to see a lot of it. And that's on Instagram. So yeah. that answers that question right there. And my website is dinocook.com. Everything is just my name. And the website, lucky you, man, <laughs> dinocook.com. There you go. That's where you can see all Dino's work. And we're going to actually scroll up because there are a lot of people watching this right now and asking questions. Uh, give me one second. I'm just going to pick one random question. So... Crew MHV said, tomorrow I'm getting my Spectra Halo 2. That was in Spanish. Said, Mañana me llega mi Spectra Halo 2. Uh, I hope to enjoy it like it deserves. That's awesome there. Uh, Justin Salimini says, you do excellent work, Dino. Salute. Thank you. Ben Kerr Dogs Tattoo said, Dino, you're the man. Got a lot of fans, man, today. All right. Um, whoever did the layout of that... Whoever did the layout of that is a pimp. You're talking about Rob, the layout of the painting? This is Rob Thomas, so let me know. I'm sorry, just like that. <laughs> I guess that. I gotta scroll down, guys, so give me a second. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, saludos from Argentina. A lot of people from Argentina. I need one of those t-shirts. I already told them where to get it. I love it. I love Shark. Quiero una. I'm gonna go down because I'm actually too early. Wow, so many questions. Let's, let's pick one. Let's see. Uh, okay, uh, this one is in Spanish, Aaron Aguirre. Uh, I'm gonna say in Spanish and in, in English. Uh, say, ¿Cuáles son tus tatuadores favoritos? And where you, uh, y dónde encuentras la inspiración? Which, uh, which are your favorite tattoo artists and where do you get inspiration from? Oh boy, that's, that's a loaded question. Uh, I don't know, it, it's, it evolves all the time. I've got my, my timeless classics, you know. I, I'm reluctant to start naming people because I, I start forgetting people, but I'll say this, um, knuckles to knuckles, both my arms and chest were done by Guy Aitchison. He's been a big, big, huge influence on me. Uh, my earlier influences and tattoo heroes were Tony Olivas and uh, Tom Renshaw, Bob Tyrell, uh, and, and it, it just changes throughout my career, you know, and, and these days, you, you can see so many more people with social media that I'm exposed to that I, that I never had heard of before. That I'm just, and of course, you know, everybody, one of everybody's favorites is Nico. Uh, I remember when Nico was first coming up and now he's just like through the roof, insanely good. Uh, James Tattoo Art, I'm a big friend of his. Uh, there's just so many. You know. When I get that question asked, um, kinda, I'm like, I don't know, ask me tomorrow because probably it's going to be different. I mean, there are so many yeah. great guys coming out, coming out like every day almost. Right. Every single Absolutely. day I discover someone new uh, through Instagram, through Facebook, and I'm like, wow. It's like at some point I'm like, when are these guys going to stop pushing the boundaries? And it seems like there, there's no limit yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have a, um, a technical question right here. Uh, someone is asking how many turns on the Halo 2 for color packing. How do you uh, how do you set up your Halo for color packing? Do you even tweak the game or you just go 
straight hard. Uh, how you know, it? I used to, I used to have a, like a probably a half a turn to a full turn off to give it a little give. But more and more lately, I've been realizing I don't even use the give. Yeah, right. I just, I just, just like it lock down. it up. I do, and I just do it all by hand and feel and stroke. And it wasn't until I started hearing you talk about it, really, following these broadcasts a lot over the last few months, that uh, I was like, wow, really? So I'm not wrong doing that? I, I thought I was supposed to use the give or something. And so really, I just like doing everything by feel. And so it wasn't until you know I started using an actual voltmeter power supply that I even paid attention to what uh, volts I was using. Like I did everything by sound and feel and I've heard you talk before about also that a lot of guys are on the like particularly on the pro team that are so busy tattooing all the time they just grab it out of the box and start going with it and there again I thought man am I supposed to be doing something fancy with this am I, and, it's, and uh, I just work straight out of the box exactly the way it comes and I don't change a thing yeah and as a matter of fact uh, talking to other artists is what it told me uh, to myself that, you know, sometimes, there, you know, sometimes uh, less is better, you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, a lot of these guys uh, that we build machines for, we ask them, how would you like your machine? And we're talking about the newer guys that are into rotaries. They are like, just build it however you think is going to be best for me. Yeah. And, and that's what we do. Then what we do is like set it with a 3.4, lock that give, and that's it. You and know? that's what I love to tattoo. And that's just, what I you do know, just go straight forward. These days. And I actually myself, I started leaning towards that, you know, the type of uh, uh, fixed machine, even with coil machines, because I remember that when I, you know, when I first started tattooing with uh, coil machines, I got confused, you know, between shaders, color packers, and stuff like that. And I always had a hard time tuning a shader to perform amazingly for shading, and a liner to perform amazingly for a liner, and a color packer amazingly to perform for a color packer, because I felt that and probably you can relate to this, that my tattoo, you know, changed depending on what we're trying to achieve, you know? Mm -hmm. And was when I decided to use one machine and started using color packers for everything. And then it was easy because all, the only thing that I have to do is just kind of like adapt my hand. It was kind of like, a, uh, you know, intuitional for me to just to grab one fixed machine and do whatever. And Yeah, basically for me, I wanted to cut down on all the bells and whistles and variables between my thought process, my hand, and my canvas. There you go. I just want to take all that out so that I can concentrate on the ideas and the finished exactly. artwork. Exactly. And and I don't want to make the paintbrush complicated. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's like uh, back then there was a lot of myth um, as well. And uh, I respect a lot of that myth, but um, people were a little bit more uh, square in the sense that they were afraid to think outside of the box, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do black and gray, you have to have a machine that the builders say, this is for black and gray, yeah. and nothing else. And people wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even t uh, you know, try to do lines or color with that because it was built for that. So I can relate to that as well. Now, next question. People often run rotaries too fat too fast, which makes things difficult. This is Chris Engel. People often run rotaries too fast, which makes things difficult. And again, uh, the machine itself does not tattoo. You know, it requires a tattoo artist, and it requires that tattoo artist with talent in order to uh, perform. You know, speed, I mean, you all know that you can control it with a voltage, so a machine running faster or, or low, it's up to you. It's up to the tattoo artist, you know, telling the machine what to do. And I think these days is where tattooing is going, just dial up and down the vaults, and just mm -hmm. go for it, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, on another, this is Federico Zimmerman is asking, are they good, the Spectra Halo for color packing? Um, what do you what do you feel that the Spectra Halo is best for? Everything. I mean, my, you, my way of thinking has totally changed and evolved. I no longer have, a, like people ask me, which one's best for lining, which one's best for coloring? I use one machine for everything. And the only reason I would set up multiple machines would, would be, before I switched to cartridges, would be to have multiple uh, needle configurations, or I'd just call them multiple paint brushes. And so with cartridges, I don't even need to do that anymore. You know, I, And I still will set up, just to make it a little bit easier, two machines and I'll tend to have one that I'm running all liners with for the day 
and one that I'm running all shaders with. But realistically, I don't even need to do that, you know? And, and by simplifying that, because it, it was so hard to break me of that habit because for 20 years I'd set up five, six machines. And when I started doing that, it was like crazy, unheard of, because people would set up two machines, but you know, nobody was setting up that many machines. And so I kind of got used to that, known for that, started feeling like it was expected of me to an extent. But at the same time, I wanted all those tools to my avail. I didn't want to find myself wanting a specific need for a specific I wish I had a three-liner right yeah. now for that. Yeah, yeah. you're trying to compromise and using the wrong tool for the wrong task. Well, now, and just in the last season, like I said, it's probably been less than three months I've been using cartridges. And part of the push for that is because I just wanted to get ready for the Zion. And, there you uh, go. So, uh, but now, I, I, in the last season, the last 90 days, I have found myself using more needle configurations and a wider range of tools than I've used in my entire career. And that's a mouthful. I mean, I've been tattooing 24 years. And to be able to say in one season, I've used more tools than I've used in a 24-year career is, is pretty profound statement, you know? Because to try some of these things that I may have been reluctant before because you gotta buy a specialty tube for it or you gotta set up this or have a machine that will run that. Now it's one machine does it all. Yep. Everything. Yep, and uh, and now disposable too, you know? Before yeah. we had to sterilize our tubes, we had to bag them and that also took time. You now we just done with a tattoo, basically half of the setup goes to the garbage. Yeah, one of my shop 75% managers. Of the one of my shop managers for me last week, I was cleaning out some cabinets and found a tube that had slipped through the cracks that did not get packed away, cleaned up, and we joked about it. And he he's never scrubbed a tube for me ever. He washed my final tube. He's like, I want to wash the final tube ever. So he scrubbed it, wrote final tube on it. So you're waiting for this? That's it. That's it. That's it. From this to that. Yep. That's actually my shop colors, green and black. The shot color, there you go. So, um, this is this one right here is the one that I built for you. Beautiful. This one is the one that my wife uses for eyebrows right now. That one is for you. Can't wait to use it. This is a total game changer. <laughs> and this is live. Dina Cook is being given the cyan the first time. And... Uh, I cannot wait what you think about this machine. Well, I will right. report back probably tomorrow. I there you go. Special there you go. To use it on tomorrow. There you go. There Perhaps you go. FK Iron. And we're probably going to be live doing a little uh, live broadcast. He's going to be tattooing his uh, fiance girlfriend. Yes. And uh, can't wait. <laughs> she's back there. She's back there. Uh, I'm turning even more red now. I've been out on a boat all day, so I'm a little sunburned. <laughs> We've been diving all morning. Oh man, this is this is one of the things about living in Florida. I, look at me, I'm white, bro. Yeah. You live in Atlanta, and you're red, I like know. a lobster. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's uh, crazy. That's that's great. So you gotta take me to. Uh, I want to try diving. So the first time is gonna be with you. Got to be. First, I gotta I'll be certified, of course. Gotta be. I'm not gonna be a scratcher or diver, right? If you're Are there scratcher divers? People that say, "Yeah, hey, give me the mask and I go." Does that exist? Uh, I'm sure it does, yeah. yeah that's let me, ask you, every, let me ask you a question. You know, like for example, ourselves, you know, we, we sell to licensed tattoo artists, you know, we do our thing. And uh, for divers, I mean, diving uh, uh, shops or suppliers say, sell to anyone or you have to be licensed to buy Yeah, they'll sell diving. to anyone. The thing is, you, you can't go on a licensed outfit to dive and do anything with it. Like, for example, my children started diving when they were five years old. And I could take them and dive with them and it was all... Wow straight and it was all legal but they could not go and actually do anything off of a boat a licensed boat until they were 10 and certified oh okay and so by the time they were 10 they'd already been diving uh bahamas and bonaire and all through the florida keys and they'd already had some shark experience and they they had a pretty unique childhood which today is their birthday by the way my identical twin so i gotta say happy, happy birthday, birthday to tyson and Bristol. tyson and happy birthday so to you he said he'd be watching, so. Tyson, are you there? I'll pop up with a comment or something. Um, so, Jessica Thornton said, tell Dino the Thorntons say what's up. All Hello. right. Ryan Walton, then what else? Oh, Ryan. 
<laughs> Jerry Scott, I got to play with the sign and it's so awesome. Can't wait to get one. Uh, the sign has been pushed back, uh, pushed back a couple of months because I'm trying to address uh, minor details right now. We're also moving CNC warehouses to another warehouse. So this is going to represent a couple of months of delay, but the machine is going. It's here. It's there. Tina's going to tattoo with it. This is what it's going to look like. This is what it looks like already. And, uh, you know, production is going to start very, very soon. Uh, a lot of people are asking for the sign. Uh, Christopher uh, Baby said, did you enjoy your dive with Ryan? Absolutely. Ryan Walton, that's who we did with today. Deep Obsession Charters, great outfit. West Palm Beach, highly suggested. Rob Thomas said, I can't wait to see the sign in person. By the way, um, do you have any convention schedule? Uh, for this upcoming months? No, none, none for 2017. Okay. Uh, like I said, I've got a really big projects that I'm working on at Great. home. And uh, dead set on getting those completed. And by the time I wrap up the things I'm referring to, it'll probably be holiday season. So first of 2017, I'm going to start booking conventions. Look what can it... 2018, I'm sorry. 2018, we're going to be rolling, rolling together. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Morris says, I wish it was back in the days where you showed your work to the owner and it was, ch it was all just about the money. And it was all just about money. I, let me read this again. I wish it was back in the days where you show your work to an owner and it was all just about money. I think you're, um, I, I don't know if uh, I understand this right. I think back in the days it used to be all about the work or all about the money. I don't know. I'm not sure I'm perceiving what he's yeah it's, it's a little bit confusing there. but uh elaborate a little more yeah elaborate a little bit more um sec we bite and i don't know if i'm saying it right because these people have these weird names it's so hard to pronounce uh hey this is my favorite machine i appreciate these videos keep making sweet shit can't wait for the sign there you go uh, if they are out of clay the sign so far is not out of clay i mean what is out of clay of this machine i'm going to switch to here again is basically the tip. You're gonna be able to unscrew the tip and autoclave it. Uh, then uh, this part you can obviously meta slide and all that stuff. But uh, the machine itself is not autoclavable, but it's very, very easy to keep clean. So, um, all right, so 42 minutes down this live broadcast, and I think it's time to make this announcement, man, and show what we have here in our hands. What do you think? Yes, sir. I'm Should we do this right now? It. Everyone ready? All right. So I'm gonna switch cameras again, and what we have right here, and I'm actually gonna have you open this box. This is not just a regular Edge X. This is, um, put it right here so the camera, there you go. This is Dino Cook Special Edition Bimini Blue. Show it to the world, Dino. Dun, 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 dun. We, yeah, we need shark music here. Jin, 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 jin. Da, da, check this out, guys. So you are going to be able to get this machine, uh, we're gonna make him for as long as Dina Cook wants this machine to be done in production. This is the, how do you call this machine? Uh, Bimini Blue. It's uh, inspired by some of my shark diving in the Bahamas, uh, and specifically the color that would appear in the shallows uh, around Bimini in particular, hence the name. And so I, uh, came up with this name for a color that I made with my ink set that I have with Fusion Ink, uh, my signature set, and it has been by far my most popular color in the set, and the one I received the most feedback about, and that I'm most partial to. So uh, what gave me the idea for it was your matte blue machine that you had, limited edition of, and the workhorse irons machine that they did in the matte olive. And so, therefore, idea was born. And I'm really, really fond of the way that the motor and the vise and everything matches. I think it's a gorgeous setup. I've been working with mine now for a couple months and I can't lay it down. I was lucky enough to be tattooed with mine by Guy H. Oh yeah, let, let's, let's see your arm if you don't mind. Just pop it right here under the overhead camera. Look at this work. Wow. So Guy Atchison reworked this, and when was the first, uh, when did you get it done for the first time? Uh, this has been a project we've been working on for years. I had my whole entire arm lasered Sick off, of and uh, so it's been 
multiple year project going on in the works. But my last session, he was generous enough and cool enough to, uh, and he, he loves to learn with new stuff too. So I'm not just trying to throw his name into the mix, but he tattooed me with it for a couple of days and, I, and I, that was pretty cool. There are some it's videos, pretty, I think, on, on Instagram that, yeah, that, yeah. that we uploaded about the uh, yeah, guy actions on tattooing with the machine. Now, don't get confused this machine with a with a seafoam. They're completely different. Let me show you right now. Uh, they are completely they are completely diff uh, different. The seafoam is more green. Green, and this one is more. It is what it is. It's more bimini blue. Really like that color. This is the first machine that we do uh, for an artist like that. Uh, the well, actually, for an artist, unfortunately, um, that's a lie, because the first one that we did, uh, special color was for my friend, Steve Martin, that we did all, uh, one all white. Rest in peace, uh, Steve Martin, right there. And Dino is actually having his own little toy right here. Dino, how do we order these things? How do people go and, and get one of these? Where are you going to be it, listing these It'll machines? be available on my website. Uh, should be within the next 24 hours, if not sooner. Uh, and you just go to dinocook.com and look on my store and you just do it through PayPal. Awesome. So uh, should I put uh, an email or something as well to, to hit you up or the website? Uh, the website, dinocook.com. I'm going to type it right now, guys. dinocook.com. And anybody can email me as well, uh, dinocook at gmail. All right. Com. Dinocook at, sorry, dinocook at at gmail.com okay all caps anyway so my uh, good buddy and co-worker at the shop Rob Thomas who's been commenting on here a lot tonight he's he's the guy that helps me out with a lot of my stuff he's the guy that did the layout for the uh, canvas print did a fine someone asked that's yeah, why well, that, someone that asked that oh that there he, that yeah. was you that was Rob Thomas that did the layout on this for me but Rob is the guy that helps me with all my website stuff he's the IT guy at our shop and a wonderful artist did my knuckles for me and uh, we have two Robs there the other Rob did my shark's teeth and knuckle the lower knuckles but anyway Rob is the guy that will be setting these up on the website for me and sure, hopefully they may even be live this evening I'm not sure but uh, people can start ordering them right away so we made how many how many of these for the 50. first run so 50 so 50, 50 are available for grabs as off as early as off they go live so what I was going to do as well, uh, to the first 20 motivated artists out there that want them. There, and there's more. So wait, get, there's more. If you call now, right? <laughs> what do you get? Uh, the print that you're holding up, I'm going to be giving away 20 canvas prints to the first 20 machines ordered. Uh, somebody tonight is going to be winning this. But the first 20 machines sold, I'm going to be... This is mine, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so there's going to be one like this one. One like, okay. One just Don't take like this away from me, please. Uh, that you choose the winner of. Yep. And because uh, you do so well at choosing winners every Oh, my God, I suck Sunday. at that. <laughs> so today's going to suck again. Well, we're, I don't even know how we're going to do it, but we're going to pick someone up. So, uh, yeah, the first 20 gets the canvas print with it, and each box is going to be coming with a small miniature print inside the box. Great. So there's gonna the same uh, same photo, right? Yes. Same photo, mi uh, miniature Mini print, print, signed by you, of course. Yes. And the print is gonna have your signature as well somewhere in the canvas. Can you yes. sign it? Yes. Great. So not only you're gonna be uh, winning this today, you're also gonna be winning this, and you're gonna be winning a T-shirt. I'm thinking, how are we gonna draw? Do you have any ideas how we can draw the the winner today? We should have thought about that before we went live, right? Hmm. hmm Interesting. Let me see. What can we do? Let's get some ideas. I got it. I got it. Can you get us a marker? Let's write a number in our hand and pff, that's it. There Random number. There you go. There you go. See? Here you go. You are red, man. Look at you on the, I know. On the camera. I'm on the boat all day. Hey, wait a minute. Did I say how old my twins are today? No. Say it. Uh, well, maybe that should be the number. I like that. I like that. So. How old are my identical twin boys today? But not yet. Don't start shooting. Don't start shooting numbers yet. If you shoot a number right now, like I said, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We're gonna continue. This is for later. <laughs> Somebody wrote seventy-four. Seventy-four. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner is guys. Don't, don't start shooting numbers because. Uh, oh, I just saw Rob Thomas posted one. 
Rod Thomas cannot can <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We we have about ten minutes of uh, of show here. Look. <laughs> look at look at people. Four point five nine hundred and twenty one. Wow. Are, are, are they I, I trying to that say old? that you look that old, man? You look wow. like a baby. Look at you. Wow. Wait. You know what? We're gonna give away the print, and we're gonna draw another uh, another person. And I'm gonna say that last minute because people can Google this stuff. That's why. For the for the hat and the shirt. So let's do two okay. different ones. So we got right. two. So we get two winners, right? One winner for the print. One winner for the hat. I mean, one winner for the shirt. Let's split it up. We're gonna do three. Bust it up. So there you go. Gets something. There yeah. you go. So how old is Dino Cook? You know, um, that that's gonna be one. Not okay. seventy four. Not <laughs> seventy five. None of that. We'll think about it. So what else? Okay. So I want to ask you about the Spectra EJX. Of course, this is the machine that you're introducing today to the masses. And tell me why you chose. Uh, why well, you chose to stick to this machine? Uh, what makes this machine for you different than the Halo? Uh, what are the features that you like about this particular machine right here that I'm about to switch cameras right now? Boom. Uh, you know, I, I I don't want to hate on any of your products. I love hate them it, all. Hate them, bro. Hate I love them all. them all. It's For me, I, the crossover was like exactly what the name says it was a crossover a bridge for me mm -hmm. and once i decided to make that purposeful push i just felt like i didn't need to give anymore i didn't need this up top i like the sleekness of it i like the whole design that just i it just spoke to me uh i'm yours it, huh i'm yours you yeah say. i mean it was it was the evolution of me coming around to, to cartridges really and uh once I made the push to do total cartridges, it just was like dropping some of the dead weight off the machine. For me, my personal view, you know. Uh, I still work with my Halos. I work with a Halo every day, and I work with an Edge every day. Now, I'll probably be working with just these two every day. Wow. And so uh, they, look, they look good together. Very quickly, my arsenal has been my FK arsenal. Oh, look at that. I was Imagine <laughs> this in that BB Blue, the 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 little I agree. port. That's gonna look good. Yeah, I gotta have a matching set. Black and BB Blue. Yes. Well, now we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have to start to we'll make some BB Blue uh, science pretty soon. We'll have to talk. <laughs> Drive all your distributors crazy. Now, um, speaking about cartridges, you I mean you have been with cartridges for a while, but not too long. I mean, have you found uh, a type of cartridge that you like? Uh, Without going into details about brands, yes or not, just the question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Found have. some that work for you. Great. Yes, great. Great. Definitely. And uh, have you done your research, or you just went straight for a brand, or? Oh, I worked with a lot of different brands, and I did a lot of my research through watching your videos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Honestly. Did that uh, help? Very much so. Yeah. You know? All right. I'm glad well, it you did. I mean, I I read all your comments on here, and I'm not just saying it because I'm sitting here with you. I'm not just trying to stroke you a little. We really appreciate that, man. But, I really no, seriously. It. And if you read the comments, the people that are on, they all feel the same way I do. Is that it's it's such a pool of information. I all the artists that I work with in my shop every day, I've been preaching to them all for for months. I was like, guys, you gotta check this out Sunday night, you know. And so it's, I, I literally have started scheduling my Sunday nights around it, but I That's get awesome, so much man. out of it, you know? It means a lot to, it, to it's me. A, it's only an hour, and I, I get more here in an hour than I get sometimes in months and years of tattooing. Like, it's just such a free flow of information. I guarantee you half the comments we're going to see right now are people agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah. Who, who doesn't agree with you, man? You're the man right here. Uh, what is it? The answer has been reveal. Oops. Uh... Uh, Rob, there are, there's two sides. Let me see. All right, guys, uh, we are about to do this thing, man. Uh, six minutes left, and we're gonna be drawing the painting right now. So stop shooting numbers. You're gonna have to wait until I type. I type go. Okay. So all the numbers that come before I say go. How old is Dino Cook's twin uh, identical twins today? Boom. Go. The first one that nails it, 33, man. He's not that old, 45. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, you guys don't want to win. Wow. They're, they're, they're just babies. Oh. All right, we have a winner. Stop it. Chris Engel wins the print. Uh, the print. You know Chris Engel, any chance? No. 
I've seen in every single live broadcast. Chris Engel, you killed it, bro. Look at that, look at that. They're gonna crash the computer. Look at that. That's it, we got it, we got a winner. There, there you go. go. There you go. So Chris Engel, you won the uh, the print. So get in touch with Dino. Uh, his email is dinocook at gmail.com. Dino cook at I'm trying to type across the table. Cook. No, oh, what am I saying? Dino cook at cook.com. No, at gmail. Gmail.com. And just get in touch with them. You know how to get in touch with them. You're, you're going to find So, Chris Engel, congratulations. You've won this amazing print right here. That I rinsed uh, life and limb. How is it going to come, the print? It's going to come like uh, in a roll in a tube uh, for shipping purposes? The, the, the winning print we're going to have stretched on gallery wrap like this. Okay. Stretched on a wooden frame. The prints that I'll be giving away with the machine will come rolled up, printed on canvas just like this, ready to frame any way they see fit. Sounds good, man. Awesome. Now... Uh, now it's my time to actually draw your, your aging here. And when I say go, you guys have to guess how old is uh, Dina Cook and my age on the other hand. Don't Google me. <laughs> Don't Google me. And go. So how old is Dina Cook? Right now you win the t-shirt. And uh, did I reveal my hand? No. Dina Cook is negative, bro. He's not that old, man. Okay, Charles won already. This is so quick. It happened so quick. Uh, Charles Mann won the t-shirt, and you're going to be in touch with uh, service at FKIron. Look, look at this thing. Look at that. That's so crazy. That's crazy. Uh, service at FKIron.com. Char uh, Charles Mann. Uh, uh, Charles Mann. Is the winner is that's crazy of that t now who who, wow. who wants to win this that hat right here by the way this is the new god metal fk iron hat this one dropped uh last week we just got them in so they're snapback really good quality soft touch uh embossed really nice so the second question is and you gotta wait until i say go this is like uh like a piñata or something. Oh, go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay. Uh, when I say go, you go and you tell me how old am I? No. You know what? I'm going to change it on you guys because probably you Googled it. How old is, hmm, my mom? There you go. There you go. How old is my mom? You got to wait until I say go. My mom is not 45. I wish. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. My mom, my mom, my mother. My mother is now 39. She would have had me when she was, wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> she started young though. Okay, so how old is my mom? Let's see. Okay, 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 we got a winner. We got a winner. Wow, that's crazy how fast Aaron Patrick, 70. That's my mom, but she looks like 25. I, I, trust me, right baby? <laughs> so Aaron Patrick, Hit me up, uh, wins, wins the hat, and email us a service at fkirons.com. Uh, tell Chuck that Dino Cook sent you and collect your gut metal FK Iron hat. So that's it. It was Charles, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Look at that. We ended up with, with our hands uh, tattooed. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to do. Um, usually at this time, we're going to, uh, you know, we would end the show, but I actually want to close the show with a question from one of the viewers. So feel free, guys, to ask uh, Dino the last question, and we're going to be done for the day. And let's do it now. Uh, Sick is going to be the one, uh, Sick Sejas is going to be the one shipping because he's our shipping guru right here. <laughs> and he said that my mom doesn't look that age. So there's a little bit of delay here always, you know, because it encodes, it goes up, so... People are a little bit behind. So, guys, ask us the last question for Dino Cook. We're 59 into this live broadcast. Okay, here we go, the, the, last, uh, the last question. Uh, this is from Ben McDonald. Say, advice for young artists. Uh, what can you recommend and suggest for a young artist? Draw, draw, draw. Keep drawing. Stay sober. That's it, man. And that was it. Very simple. I think that's the key of success. Yes. Focus. Yes. And to remain focused, you have to remain focused. Leave all the crap on the side that distract you from getting focused. And that's it. And rock on. That's it. That's it, bro. 
Dino. Thanks, bro. It has been a pleasure. Appreciate it. And thank, thank you, you to all of me. you guys for overwhelming this uh, live broadcast. And, and don't forget. And don't forget. DinoCook.com. DinoCook.com, the Bimini Blue, available with a custom print that is going to come inside the box right here. There you go. So, guys, thank you so much for watching another live broadcast. And I'll see you next Sunday with, who knows, with some topic. We'll figure it out. Until then, take care.